Welcome guys, in today's video we want to pick up from where we left off in our last video. So in today's video we want to complete from question 41 to 50. And remember guys, we're working on the stage 2, set 1, city and guilds math pass paper, alright? But before we get into the video guys, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button as these are all free ways to support the Chris Maths Academy. Now let's get right into it. Now we're looking at question 41. On a map, 1 cm represents 10 km. What is the distance represented by 9 cm? Right? Now we can use a proportion to, to represent this, as well as we can just use some common reasoning. All right? So think of it. If 1 cm on the map, represents 10 kilometers that tells us that for every one centimeters on the map the actual measurement is what 10 kilometers so think of it if we have nine centimeters on the map then the actual measurement should be nine times as many kilometers on this side all right so and nine times ten that's what that's 90 kilometers Hopefully you guys can see the correlation right there. Alright, so 1 cm is equal to 10 km. Then of course 9 cm should be equal to 90 km. Which means option B right here would be your answer. We could also set this thing up using proportion. And the units that we are comparing here is centimeters and kilometers. Now on the map, 1 cm is equal to 10 km. So what we want to know now is what is this 9 centimeters here in kilometers, alright? Fair enough. So we're using the same scale right here. Now, we can do some cross multiplication here. 1 times x is x. 9 times 10 is 90. So x is equal to 90 kilometers, alright? So therefore, our answer is option B as we would have mentioned before. Alright, now we're looking at question 42. A lorry driver buys 18 gallons of petrol. He receives one glass for every five full gallons. Alright, so he receives one free glass for every five full gallons. This, this statement here is very important. How many glasses does he receive? Alright, now recall, he receives one free glass for every five full gallons. Now let's look at it. How many 5 full gallons can we get from 18 gallons? There you go. We can only get 3 5 full gallons from the 18 gallons. Alright, let's say we had some gallons here. We use these um, circular thingy to represent the gallons. Alright, so here we can get 5 gallons. We'll get another 5 full gallons another five full gallon now we'll only have three gallons remaining we can't get five full gallons from three all right so we can only get one two three five full gallons from the 18 gallons all right hopefully that makes a lot of sense our answer here would be option c all right now looking at question 43 five students sat an exam their results were 40, 30, 50, 35, and 70. What is the mean average of their results? All right. Now, how do we go about finding mean average? All right. What we want to do, we want to add up all the scores here, then divide it by the number of scores that we have. All right. So we have one, two, three, four, five scores. All right. So we're going to add up these scores, then divide it by five. All right. So we have 40, 30, 50, 35, 70. I'm going to add them up now. All right. All zeros, just one five. Can just carry down the five here. Seven plus three, that's 10. 10 plus five, 15 plus three, 18 plus four, that's 22. All right. Now, this amount to 225. 
and we're going to divide this 225 by 5 all right so i want to know how many times can 5 go into 225 and we're going to take the long division rule because remember guys city and gills doesn't allow for the use of a calculator all right so we have to do all this thing using brain power now 5 into 22 goes four times four times five is 20 now 20 from 22 will leave us with two carry down the five here get some more space now five into 25 goes five times five times five is 25 all right and where to right here 25 from 25 is zero so therefore our answer would actually be 45 all right so therefore the mean average would be 45 all right all right now looking at question 44 10 people were asked to rate a new flame out of 10. their ratings were six six five three four four five six five and six the mean average rating for the new flame is and this is very similar to question 43 and again we have what 10 ratings here all right because it was 10 people now all we need to do is to add up all the ratings and then divide it by 10 now we have 6 plus 6 that's i believe that's 12 12 plus 5 that's 17 17 plus 3 that's 20 20 plus 4 that's 24 plus 4 again we have 28 plus 5 that's 33 plus 6 that's 39 plus 5 that's 44 plus 6 that amounts to 50 all right so we're going to divide the 50 by 10 and 50 divided by 10 goes 5 times so therefore the mean average rating for the new flame is what is 5 which is option c right here all right now looking at question 45 now on a cost comparison website the same item is on sale at five different stores the prices are 44 dollars 47 dollars 37 dollars 44 dollars again and 43 dollars what is the range of the prices for this item all right now let's think about range now we can ascertain the range by finding the difference between the most expensive price and the cheapest price all right so in other words we are going to subtract the lowest cost from the the greatest cost all right so when we look at the cost the largest number here would be 47 all right and the smallest number here would be the 37 so we're going to take this 37 from the 47 and that will leave us with 10 all right so therefore the range would be ten dollars all right all right now looking at 46 the profit of an item is worked out by selling price minus cost of the production is equal to profit all right now the cost of production is 370 dollars and the selling price is 450 dollars what is the profit all right fair enough now remember profit of an item is worked out by what selling price minus cost of production all right so the profit which i'll call p is equal to the selling price I'm going to call that sp minus the cost of production which i'll call cp all right cost of production now what is the selling price here let's look at it the selling price is what 450 dollars all right and we're going to take the cost price from that or the cost of production which is what 370 now 450 minus 370 will leave us with 80 all right so that's 80 dollars profit right there which means our answer would be option a if you're unable to work it out like this because you guys won't have the the use of a calculator it is not allowed in the exam you can do old school subtraction all right set up you can set it up like this and do your subtraction zero from zero zero seven from five you can't get seven from five so we're going to borrow from here all right it should leave us with three place the one here making this 15 
7 from 15 will leave us with what? Will leave us with 8. 3 from 3 is 0. Alright, so that's how we got the 80 right there. Alright. Alright, now we are at question 47. The value of n in the equation 2n minus 1 is equal to 9. Alright, now we want to find out the value of n here. Now what one of my students like to do, she normally just try try these numbers. Alright, so she'll try the 4, plug the 4 in, replace the n with 4. So this is saying 2n, which is the same thing as saying 2 times n. Alright, so if we substitute 4 for n, we'll now read it as 2 times 4, which is 8. 8 minus 1 will not give us back the 9. 8 minus 1 is 7. So therefore, our answer cannot be n equal 4. Now, what if we tried 5? 2 times 5 is 10 minus 1 will give us the 9. So therefore, our answer would actually be option B right here. Alright. Now another way how we could have done it, we could also apply the concept of balancing equations here. Alright, or transposing the equation to make n the subject. Now what we can do here, we want to get rid of this negative 1 first. Of course you could get rid of the, the 2 first, alright. And if you guys are not comfortable with transposing equations, then you can check the description section below. I'll have a video of that, a very detailed video, alright, that pretty much outlines that concept all right now what we are going to do here all right to get rid of this negative one we are going to do the opposite of subtracting one here all right which is to add one all right now by adding one here i'll get rid of this negative one but however the concept is that whatever i do to one side i must do the same thing to the other side to keep the equation balanced all right so if i add one here I have to add 1 on this side as well so the equation can remain balanced. Now negative 1 plus 1 will cancel out each other. Once you're doing the opposite of a thing, they'll just cancel out. Now we're left with 2n is equal to 9 plus 1 is 10. Now we want to do the opposite of this operation also. Alright, so we're multiplying by 2 here, 2n, same thing as 2 times n going to do the opposite of that which is division so we're going to do the opposite of multiplying by 2 which is to divide by 2 now if i divide this side by 2 i'm also going to have to divide this side by 2 as well to keep the equation balanced now 2 will cancel 2 here and n will be equal to 2 into 10 goes 5 so therefore n is equal to 5 all right so either way you do it guys once you are getting the correct answer, I guess that that's the whole aim of it, alright? Now let us look at 48. Alright guys, now we're looking at question 48. By now you guys should be able to work out this question. Very similar to 47. Now the value of P in the equation P minus 2 is equal to 7. I want to know what is the value of P, alright? Now again, you can do the trial and error, alright? As I told you guys before, that's how one of my students likes to, to work a problem like this. Or you can use the concept of balancing equations, alright? Now let's look at the trial and error method. Now, what we're going to do here is to substitute each of these values for P to see if we'll get the 7 on this end. Now, replacing P with 2, 2 minus 2 is 0. Therefore, this is not the answer. Now we are going to replace P with the 5. 5 minus 2 is actually 3. So this is not the answer. Replace P with the 7. 7 minus 2 is 5. Therefore, this is not the answer either. Before even trying it, then we can just assume that D is the answer. Alright, replace P with 9. 9 minus 2 is 7. Alright, so therefore our answer would be D right here. Now, if you guys want to use a concept of balancing equations, then you can also do that. Now, here we have a minus 2 here. The whole goal here, if we want to find the value of P, then we need to isolate the P on one side of the equal sign by itself. So, we need to do the opposite of whatever is taking place here. Here, we are minus in 2. I'm going to do the opposite of that, which is to add 2. If I add 2 to this side, then I'm required to add 2 to this side as well keep the equation balanced minus 2 plus 2 will cancel each other out now i'm left with the p is equal to 7 plus 2 which is 9 all right 
so therefore you guys can do it using either method both method work um, quite fine all right now we're looking at question 49 this diagram is drawn accurately the size of the angle is all right so you guys are allowed to use a protractor to ascertain the magnitude of this angle right here or the size of the angle all right right away by just looking at this all right i have a little bit of experience dealing with angles so i know that this angle is about 65 degrees i'm sure it's, it won't be 115 all right 115 is actually an obtuse angle this is actually a acute angle all right and these angles are greater than zero but less than 90 not 90 less than 90 so it wouldn't be a 90 degree angle either and it's larger than 30 degrees of course all right so therefore our answer here would be 65 degrees but don't worry about this too much you guys are allowed to use a protractor so once you have a protractor you can actually ascertain the exact size of this angle right here all right all right now looking at question 50 this diagram is not drawn accurately now the size of angle x is i want to know the size of angle x now the key thing here that i want to know is that angles at a point on a straight line adds up to 180 degrees all right so all these angles will sum up to 180 degrees now this angle right here is actually a 90 degree angle all right so this symbol right here represents a 90 degree angle so here we have a 90 degree angle and a 13 degree angle and we know that the remainder must be x all right and remember all these angles will sum up to give us 180 degrees all right so if we add up these two angles and subtract what we get from 180 then the leftover will represent our x right here all right so we're going to add them up now so we have 90 plus 13 all right so 3 plus 0 that's 3 1 plus 9 that's 10 so this is what 103 so what we want to do now is to subtract this 103 from 180 all right so there we go now we can't get three from zero so we're going to borrow here borrow from the eight leaving seven place the one here three from ten will leave us with seven zero from seven is seven so this is actually 77 degrees all right so therefore our answer would actually be option b right here thank you guys for sticking me to the end of this one as we continue in this video series we only have one video remaining guys to complete the paper if you are still here and you haven't yet subscribers yet what are you waiting for please hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up those are really helpful ways to support the christmas academy all right i'm looking forward to see you guys in our next video until that time blessings and peace